magnesium donates two of its electrons to two protons in solution, thereby generating hydrogen gas and magnesium ion. So we define the rate and give it the symbol following the book of B, and this is defined as the partial pressure of hydrogen respect to time, and actually it's a total differential, P, H2, T, and this will depend on the surface area of the magnesium strip and the concentration of protons. So we have a general rate law sure I'm consistent with the book here. Yes. S is the surface area of the magnesium raised to its order alpha, and then the proton concentration of molarity raised to its order beta. Uh, the surface area of the magnesium strip will be twice the length of the strip times the width of the strip. Uh, the width is going to be 0. Centimeters, and the length is something that we're going to vary, as well as the concentration. Finally, the rate constant follows is expected to follow Arrhenius-like behavior. Where E sub A is the activation energy, R is the universal gas constant, T is the temperature. A is a prefactor. Thus, the objectives of this experiment are to determine alpha, beta, K, and more importantly, with K, uh, its temperature dependence. So, let me be clear here. K at a To do this? Well, uh, let us just consider in an abstract sense the parameter space of and using the variables that will control the well, actually, no, uh, surface area, proton concentration, and of course temperature. What we want to do is sample a sufficient space of this. Um, to start out with, we'll pick a concentration vary the surface area. Then we'll, at the same surface area, vary the concentration. And then finally, working in the third uh, direction, we'll vary the temperature. We'll place our sample in some cooling bath, and then we'll place it in a warming bath. So the setup to achieve this will consist of a water bath within which we will place our reaction vessel, which is just a test tube with a manifold running off. We can put a rubber seal on this. And then off of this manifold, we connect to a pressure transducer to observe the total pressure in the reaction. And of course, the other variable, uh, we will put our HCl solution in this test tube and then put the strip of magnesium in the test tube. And this will effervesce hydrogen, and we will be able to monitor, monitor the total pressure as a function of time. And the data essentially will look something like this. With time and pressure, you expect to see your data eventually plateauing off. Why? Because you'll exhaust one of the reactants. Uh, magnesium can basically completely dissolve at which point, no reaction. And the analysis is to consider the initial slope of this. So the initial slope will give you what we call V naught, and V naught, of course, is the initial reaction rate. And you will 
do this uh, for a total of seven trials, uh, representing these seven points of observation. So let's just make a table here. And for surface area, what we'll be using there to control that is the, the length of the magnesium strip. Hopefully this would give me enough space here to have seven. The length of the strip in centimeters and the concentration of HCl molar. Uh, so the first two trials you'll conduct at room temperature. And you will vary the length. Uh, first, you'll look at a 0.5 uh, centimeter strip, or uh, one centimeter, I'm sorry. A one centimeter strip, a two centimeter strip, and a 0 0.5 centimeter strip, a half a centimeter, all at the same concentration of 0 0.500 molar. So that will correspond to varying the surface area while keeping everything else constant. Next, you will keep the two more trials at one centimeter strip, but now you will change the concentration going down to 0 0.100 molar, and then in a concentrated run of 1.0 molar. And look at that, I'm running out of space, can you believe it? Okay. Uh, 98 all the way down to the, and then the last two trials, running out of space, what, what can you do? Can you even see that? Wow, it's a comedy of errors. <laughs> Remotely learning, so much fun, all right. All right, I'll just put it up here. Uh, sorry about that. Jesus, maybe I should redo this. Cut. This is the beauty of going from the stage to the film medium, you know, I can just completely stop recording and redo it, but I won't. Try to keep it as real as possible. The last two trials, uh, you will look at uh, 273 Kelvin, so basically in a nice bath, and then you can warm it up to around 345 uh, Kelvin. And again, the length of this, uh, the strip will be one centimeter, and the proton concentration will be 0 0.500, 0 0.500. 0 .500. Thus, you'll achieve all of these. Uh, seven seven points in this uh, you know abstract parameter space. Then the next question is, how do you analyze your data? How do you analyze these results? To analyze these results, we're going to rely on a log log plot to extract the reaction orders. The idea is as follows: If we take uh, the logarithm of our rate expression, so log v naught. So again, v naught is something you get from the slope of your data. That's going to equal log k plus, yes, yes. Have trouble with logs, too. Log k plus alpha log s plus beta log your proton concentration. If you look at the first case where uh, temperature is the same and your proton concentration is the same. So these first three trials, if you were to plot log, the log of your initial rate versus the log of your surface area, these three points should fall into a straight line and from the slope of this straight line, you get alpha. Likewise, if you do a log, log plot, log of the reaction rate versus uh, the log of the proton concentration, keeping uh, temperature constant. So for those, this would be for trials, one, uh, four, and five, keeping the, at the same temperature and keeping the surface area constant now. 
these three points should also fall into a straight line, and from the slope, the slope will be equal to beta. Alpha and beta, by the way, are expected to be uh, rational numbers, that is to say, the, the ratio of small whole numbers. In fact, they're probably going to be whole numbers. In fact, you can probably go up and look them up to compare. So do not express alpha and beta as a real number. Try to round it to the nearest ratio of small whole numbers. Having done that, having established alpha and beta, your rate constant as a function of time for all five, for all seven trials can be calculated based on the initial reaction rate divided by the surface area, I'm doing it, the surface area raised to its reaction order times the proton concentration raised to its reaction order. In other words, going back to the rate expression, just simply solve for K. Now because K has a, uh, to extract the, uh, the prefactor and the activation energy, of course, then we would simply take a, uh, the log of K should give us uh, the log of alpha, or A, as the intercept plus E minus, I should say, minus E A R T. Uh, yes. So, so what you want to plot then is log of K versus one over T. And if you do that for all uh, seven of your points, and some of them you expect to cluster around the same point, you'll have something maybe looking like that. The slope is how you're going to get your activation energy. It's not going to be equal to it, but uh, you'll be able to get that. And then the intercept. is how you will get your uh, prefactor A. So that in a nutshell is today's experiment, which you will be conducting virtually, which means you just get to watch the rest of this video, and I send you some data, but what data it will be, I guarantee. To begin the experiment, I'm first gonna check out my acids. Uh, I have a one molar hydrochloric acid solution here, and a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. What I don't have is a 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So what I will do is I'm going to dilute the one molar solution to 0.5 molar. And I have here a 100 milliliter flask, a 50 milliliter pipette, and some distilled water. Next, I want to prepare my magnesium strips. Uh, so I have here magnesium. I should actually wear gloves when I handle this. I'm going to cut it up into uh, a two centimeter strip and several one centimeter strips, and then a half a centimeter strip. Before I do that, however, I want to polish it. The reason being is, is that it contains magnesium oxide. There's a patina of magnesium oxide, which will inhibit our experiment today. So first I will uh, you know, polish it with sandpaper, then I'll cut it up and measure it. And then the final step is to wrap each piece with copper wire. The reason I want to wrap each piece with copper wire is that when I add it to my hydrochloric acid solution, I want to make sure that that magnesium strip sinks to the bottom. Uh, there's a tendency, uh, if I don't do this, there, there is a tendency for the magnesium to sort of float on the surface and I have to actually agitate my flask, which introduces noise into my pressure signal. I don't want to do that.
materials prepared, I now want to set up the actual apparatus. So I'm going to need a pressure gauge, reaction vessel, a temperature gauge, and an electric stirrer, and a heater when I want to do one at high temp. I'm going to now run the first sample here. Uh, I've poured in about 10 milliliters of the 0.5 molar HCl. I have the one centimeter magnesium strip right here. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to the pressure transducer. So the procedure at this point is I'm simply just going to drop the magnesium strip in cork it, uh, make sure it's sealed on top, and then I'm going to hit collect when it comes to the data. Under data collection, I've set the duration of the experiment for 10 minutes, and I'm going to sample, so every two seconds I'm going to record data. What I'll do is I'll drop it in, cap it, and then I'm going to hit collect in that order. Here we go. Dropping it in, corking it.
can see here, I have plenty of data after two minutes, and it's still in the linear regime. So that's sufficient. All we want is the initial rate. So I'm going to go ahead and save this data by simply cutting and pasting it into an Excel spreadsheet. So there are, there is my data. I'm going to go ahead and just edit this a bit here. But, uh, as far as disposal goes, I'm just going to dump the contents out into a common waste feature. And I'll worry about that later.
The experiment today, I think, was a success. I got some really good data for you, which I will be sharing uh, by way of an Excel file pretty uh, soon when I get home. Uh, I just want to point out, though, that two changes. Uh, so, uh, trial eight. I did another dilution in there because I wasn't happy uh, with uh, with the way the data was looking for the 0.1 molar. In fact, usually uh, I think the book advises to do a 0.2 molar. Uh, the temperature, again, essentially at room temperature in that bath. And the Excel file will have all the exact temperatures, so bear, bear in mind that. The effect of the HCl solution actually vaporizing, leading to an additional factor in the observed uh, change in pressure with time. Uh, something that I, we can't really put a, uh, a firm handle on, but it's also probably minor uh, when you look at the data of trial seven. Needless to say, I mean, the, the neighborhood, if I just kept that thing capped, um, you're talking about 0 0.01 uh, atmospheres of pressure from that. So I don't think it's all that significant. The, uh, the write-up for this lab, you know, um, you know everything you need to do at this point. I think the objectives were clearly stated. Um, 
the obviously the main difference with this lab because it was a virtual lab um, you didn't do it yourself which is why you know I wanted to at least have a video so you had some sense of what the experiment was like for this lab report um, no no CNE news article primarily because I don't know if you have access to it and I got a stack here but I'm not bringing those home uh, no CNE uh, news uh, summary. Uh, you can still do it if you want, but it's not necessary, okay, not required. But do pay special emphasis to the write-up of the actual experimental uh, procedure, the, you know, the details of the experimental procedure. So, you know, one, one to two paragraphs, and again, I'm not looking for you know, a novel or anything. I think just a summary that someone else could go out there and duplicate it or would have some sense of what was going on. Uh, today is the 20th, and the university is going to be closing down for a long time. We may never see each other again. I should probably erase this. Just Well, good luck. No one can say whether the time has come for an easing of the struggle, but history and our own conscience will judge us harshly if we do not now make every effort to test our hopes by action, and this is the place to begin. According to the ancient Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. My fellow Americans, let us take that first step. Let us, if we can, step back from the shadows of war, seek out the way of peace. And if that journey is a thousand miles, or even more, let history record that we, in this land, at this time, took the first step. Thank you.